Hey guys, it's Neil with BXR Motors and today we're going to lay out the base structure of the chassis and start bringing in some components like the rear subassembly, the engine and transmission and kind of lay those out within uh, the space that I've designed in CAD, kind of see where everything fits and falls into place and uh, just start laying that stuff out. So stay tuned. <laughs> All right guys, I just wanted to jump into CAD real quick and show you guys a, a kind of a brief overview of the initial design that we have going on right now. And by no means is this the complete uh, design at all. Uh, this is really focusing on the center section of the car uh, and, and the driver's uh, seating and positioning uh, along with you know the engine and transmission and stuff. So there's still a front uh, main structure and, and assembly that I have to add and then also the rear uh, sub-assembly that I'll show you guys a little bit more details about here soon. And some of this I'll have to uh, change and, and make fit you know, for the changes to the front suspension and the rear suspension. But right now this is really the main base structure that I know is going to be right there that we need to start with. Some of this is going to be uh, kind of, you know, just figuring it out as we go. <laughs> That's kind of how some of this stuff works when you're developing a whole new vehicle, basically. There's really, it's when you get to the real world components, you start getting everything in place, then sometimes you have to come back to the CAD and make some changes. So with that, let's just look at the car right now. So as you can see, I have the engine in place uh, with the kind of a mock-up of the transmission and the driver and where, where they're sitting along with the seating uh, and some of the roll cage structure. So of course not all of it is here and we'll take the body away and as you can see I have my little mannequin guy and he's scaled to my size and I'm 6'4 so that's one of the goals with this is to make this vehicle uh, fit someone that's my size and, and kind of specifically height and to make sure that, that I can fit in a car like this because it's always been a challenge in the past but there's at least two inches above this roll bar and this is kind of a side bar as well so the main bar or the main hoop is pretty far from the driver's helmet and uh, the seating area right now will probably be uh, about five to six inches forward so we'll place that uh, driver a little more forward uh, than where he's at here. I just needed to see, you know, where the space was to the whole curvature of the roof structure. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of a quick, you know, overview of this. Obviously, I'm going to have some challenges running the exhaust through to the back, and the exhaust pipes will not look like this, or the headers will not be like this. They're going to be facing forward where the turbos are, and then routed back out, and then they will exit through the side. Of the car in the, in the front uh, but I would like an option for the exhaust to exit out to the back so that's going to be, be a little challenging to figure that out so that's one of the things that we'll have to overcome if possible during this, this build um, yeah so you know with that uh, you guys feel free to comment let me know your thoughts uh, if you have any ideas or suggestions on things uh, you know I'm always open to it and you can um, always share your thoughts and opinions uh, and just so you guys know you know I'm not a does you know an engineer of any type uh, I'm not a car designer or anything and this is just a passion of mine to build my own car and I did it once before and it wasn't exactly to what I wanted and so now I am redoing it and building things uh, better and just overall much better so uh, so yeah and I've been getting a lot of emails and you know people wanting to do stuff like this and, and wanting you know all the you know, where did I get my education and where did I get all just all the knowledge or whatever and I, and I didn't I just figured it out uh, <laughs> that's the only thing I can tell anyone is you know when you have a passion about a project or a build you just have to build it so you know just build it get started don't worry about the right time or having all the right amount of funds in place or the right expertise or anything you know just get it started and start building it 
uh, and then you'll figure everything out on the way. The, the hardest part is, is just jumping into it and, and starting the process. Uh, once you do that, you kind of become committed and then you start figuring out all the, the more difficult things uh, as you go. So, you know, the first time I did this, there was a lot of things I didn't have access to, uh, a lot of expertise, a lot of software that I didn't have. And now today I have access to, you know, suspension analysis software. I have you know, access to good CAD that I can develop, you know, a nice roll cage. I have the tube bending software. And that's just stuff that, you know, I didn't even know existed before. Uh, and, you know, now uh, I have the opportunity to use it and make something better and something I can feel comfortable taking and racing and not, not you know, feel like I'm going to die. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, I guess on that note, I will uh, see you guys out in the garage basically and we'll start building the chassis. All right guys, so now that I've gone over the CAD a little bit, I figured I'd show you the rear subassembly that I was talking about. This is from a 2018 Mustang GT350. I think there's really no differences between that and the GT performance pack or track pack or whatever, but basically I think it has bigger axles and a torsen rear end or something like that. But as far as the package is exactly what I what I wanted and it provides a very uh, a thin, you know, package all together. And so that's going to help keep the uh, weight down low, the center of gravity, you know, really low and uh, make it easy to replace all the components and parts. That was an issue that I had with the other uh, chassis design is all of my dampeners and you know, suspension components were up real high to get a, uh, over and around all of the suspension and, and chassis stuff that was in the way. So this is a really compact uh, package. And then also being Ford, it's very easy to get parts for. Uh, so if you break it, it's not super expensive to get things and replacement parts. That was kind of one of the other reasons that I went for it. Also, the, one of the big main ones was just that it's a very wide rear assembly section. I needed something that was super wide because I widened the blade to 78.7 inches, I think. This whole uh, suspension with the tires on it to the edge of the tires is 78.5 so that turned out to be perfect so that it should fit perfect on a body without having to get different type of offset wheels as I like these type of wheels because basically centered wheels meaning that the the uh, I don't know how to say that exactly but <laughs> that, that they're center line essentially so where the brake and rotor is is pretty much exactly in the center of the wheel so all the uh, rotational mass is right in the middle of the wheel where you'd want it that's uh, one reason I went that route uh, anyway so next let's start mocking up the chassis the uh, base of the chassis here I'm going to do it on the concrete for now and then we'll probably raise that up onto a platform because I'm just going to tack it together before we start putting in the main main cage components and then also I'm going to bring in the engine and transmission and kind of lay it out in front of the the whole setup here just so that I can see how spacing is and have my seats over here that I can place and kind of figure some of that stuff out so anyway let's get to that and get started So I was attempting to swap out the Brembo brakes from the rear of the blade over to this suspension and it almost fits so the main uh, rotor uh, fits perfect and so that's great. The caliper however needs to be modified a little bit so this is the uh, Brembo four piston caliper for the rear and this bracket that I have on this piece needs to be machined about a millimeter down and then once I do that, that should be a perfect fit and good to go. So that's great. So anyway, so I'll do that at a different time, but I just wanted to see if they fit uh, directly quickly and see if I like that that way. So this is good news because this is an easy bracket to uh, make or just machine and I'm happy about that.
All right guys, so now uh, we've finished building a new engine hoist. Uh, it's a fold up style, so it doesn't take a lot of space up in the garage. And we're getting ready to pull out the engine out of the blade. I have my son here who's been helping me out and we're gonna pull this engine out and bring it inside the garage so that we start laying up the chassis. All right guys, so I now have the engine and all the big main components uh, sitting within their uh, spacing in relation to where the uh, main center of the belly pan uh, is, is gonna be placed, if that makes sense. <laughs> so uh, now everything's just kind of sitting on the floor at the moment and I'll end up raising the belly pan up to its normal right height and the engine's going to actually go down quite a bit and then the whole rear end assembly is going to come up. So I got to build some bracing and, and kind of like a little platform for everything to sit on. So everything's kind of at different heights. So the engine is going to be at one height and the rear sections at another height and then the belly pan uh, will be at its uh, specific height off the ground. So I have to establish the, the normal right height of everything. But right now I'm just doing it on the conc concrete floor just for uh, mocking up and tack welding the main portion of the belly pan. And so I have the, the outer sections done, but I still need to go in and do the uh, center section for the transmission tunnel area. And that was one of the areas that I needed to really focus on from the previous design because 
I had exhaust running underneath it, and I'd still want to have that capability to run uh, two three-inch pipes underneath the transmission, and there's just not a lot of room there, and it has to come in from over here, kind of go down and around and through and, and all of that, and this transmission is kind of oddly shaped, so the front of it is actually not as wide as you would think, and then it gets real bulky in the back where the uh, sixth gear is uh, arrangements at. So that took some time to figure out and kind of problem solve. And I had it before on the original chassis with, the th with two three inch pipes going through, but it was causing an issue with the seating for shorter people when they needed to scoot the seats up forward, the transmission tunnel kind of bowed inward and it took up too much space and it would kind of crash into where the seat was. So that's one thing that I had to resolve. Okay, so let me just jump in with the CAD uh, just so that I can better show you guys exactly what I'm talking about with the exhaust and the seating space and the area since I have it laid out here where it's a little bit easier to visually uh, see everything. So, um, although I uh, can't really see the exhaust. <laughs> uh, so, all right, hang on, let me remove. So these red pipe in the center here, this is the exhaust. And let me just remove these guys here. Uh, yeah, bring back the transmission so you guys can kind of get an idea. Um, yeah, so the red pipe that you see in the middle, this is uh, the two three inch exhaust pipes. And so there's a little bit of room that goes around. They're virtually gonna be stuck together uh, here. So they're real close fitting. Uh, and then they kind of spread apart as they go underneath the transmission and then they uh, come in over towards the side of the engine uh, where they'll tie into the rest of the exhaust pipe. So the headers, which I don't have modeled in place just yet, uh, go forward into the turbos, uh, spin up the turbos and then the exhaust exits back out kind of over and then down through uh, the rest of the exhaust and then you know, we'll connect up to here and then out to the back. And so there's going to be an option for that. And then I want to also have the option for the side exiting exhaust. So as you can see here, I have the two exhaust pipes coming in this area. And then there's going to be like a real low profile flat muffler that will tie into here and then go through this uh, kind of custom muffler and then tie into the side exiting exhaust uh, that will be uh, right there. So yeah, I hope that kind of explains everything since I have the engine modeled and kind of a transmission representation of it modeled. Uh, and you can kind of see some of the cage work. I have more of that in place now uh, and how that's, how that's going. Uh, and if I bring the guy back here and then let's put in a seat, other seat. Uh, you can see now that where the center section here, uh, the center of the uh, uh, belly pan or the, I don't know, the belly pan footwell is uh, kind of coming inwards and now the seat can move forward quite a bit and so that used to come back further and as the seat would move forward it would start running into this uh, bend area here. So I've actually widened this area quite a bit and then I've given it more length uh, in the main seating area and so you can see this is where the firewall is, and you have all this space uh, to move forward. And this is a six foot four uh, mannequin that I have in place uh, with long legs. So this is proportional to my own body, and it still allows me to have to move the seat up quite a bit just to get to where the pedals, so the pedals will kind of lay a few inches off of the firewall up front in this area. And so that, like I said, that's kind of a big, uh, part of this build is making this car uh, fit my size of a person <laughs> and, and, and make it comfortable and easy to get in and out of uh, and all that stuff. So it's a super challenge. I, I think it's just, it's, it's hard. It's hard for just regular manufacturers to do this. So I don't know, it's kind of crazy that I'm trying to attempt it as well. But anyway, that's kind of one of my big goals with this besides just being a super fast uh, vehicle that handles really great on the track, but you can kind of see more of the uh, the uh, cage structure and how it's a little bit more race car. So keep in mind that the whole body of the car is composite 
fiberglass, carbon fiber, uh, a variety of different materials, none of which are metal. So I have to uh, build this type of cage structure uh, to keep everything safe because of those materials uh, are not going to be any part of the structural part of the, the body. Uh, anyway, just wanted to jump in, show you guys some of the CAD work of this again, and and explain some of the uh, exhaust challenges and things going forward. So I'll just I'll keep doing this in the uh, other videos as well, kind of going back and forth to show you my process for figuring out some of these problems and and uh, coming up with solutions to it, uh, bouncing between something like CAD and the real world components that are in the garage and you know it's all a challenge but uh, I think it's good for you guys to see this stuff so anyway and then I had to go through and basically mock up part of this in CAD at least all the main uh, node points where everything's uh, going to be sitting and then verify the distance of this to the belly pan and from the belly pan to the transmission uh, get the length of the drive shaft and then from the transmission uh, to engine and front suspension and the overall wheelbase. So <laughs> it was a lot to figure out and I didn't get as far as I wanted to on this uh, lower base, you know, uh, chassis component here or the, or the belly pan. And, uh, but I do have it kind of tack welded so you can see right there. And I think I did pretty good on keeping everything square and, and welded real nicely so you can see that and I'll go back and, and weld that up once I have more of the, the main center section of this in place. That will help uh, keep it from distorting too much. But right now I have a little square right here and it's uh, pretty square. So I'm happy with that and I did it on the concrete which I generally don't recommend. Uh, you know it's much better to do this on a platform or a table uh, but I kind of lucked out with the garage, so it's super straight. I don't have any cracks or anything in my garage, and, and it's just super level and, and, uh, and straight. So I just used it. It just made sense. But I will, like I said, build a platform for everything to uh, be raised to its proper right height and then just build everything from there. So there's still a ton of work to be done, and that's going to come up in the next videos. So you guys stay tuned for that. We we'll start getting into all the main chassis structure stuff. And uh, there's been a lot that's, that's changed even in this video since I went back so many times. I uh, made a few little tweaks to it. So I may show a little clip of that. And yeah, uh, so this is uh, crazy. It's finally getting going on, on the chassis part and things should start moving a little quicker, hopefully and start getting into the exciting stuff. So you guys, you know, let me know what you think on this car project and what your thoughts are, uh, what ideas you may have. Just, you know, throw me some feedback and comment all you want. I'll try to answer anybody's questions and stuff. Uh, but yeah, so that's it for this video and I will see you guys uh, in the next one.